breaks into two the anterior circumflex and the posterior circumflex and they form a an astromotic ring at the surgical neck of the humerus so it is important this the anterior and the posterior they supply the humeral head so if there is a fracture in the surgical neck area in the proximal humerus part the there is likelihood that they may go into avascular necrosis the head may go into osteonecrosis so now i have a question for you out of these two and the brachial artery which of the following is the most important blood supply so you may be having the question on your screen please answer it the main blood supply out of these three what do you think is the most important blood supply to the humeral head okay so actually we have got a very mixed views most of them have not answered i don't know why do you want some more time okay i end and i will share the result so you can see that 67% have answered anterior circumflex humeral and 33 have answered posterior circumflex and zero for the brachial artery yeah it's true but the answer here is posterior circumflex humeral artery just remember this it is important in the initial days it was in the initial days it was the anterior circumflex humeral artery which is the main blood supply to the uh, humeral head but recently this concept has been changed and it is now the posterior circumflex humeral artery the original study was done in 1990 on the cadavers when they have decided and they have said that anterior circumflex is the main artery which supplies the humeral head almost 70 to 80% of the humeral head supply but nowadays it has been changed so this is a new concept this is a important mcq please remember it is the posterior circumflex humeral artery it is supplying the entire head of the humerus except for a portion of the greater tuberosity and posteromedial part of the head which is supplied by anterior circumflex so just remember this is important mcq for the fnb as well as in any other exam the newer concept posterior circumflex is a important in your textbook you may have the answer anterior circumflex but that is a wrong one in the recent literature it is now the posterior now we talk about the what are the predictors of humeral head ischemia so when there is a fracture in the proximal humerus we have a certain criteria that is the radiographic criteria which was given by hertel and it is known as hertel radiographic criteria he said that if there is a medial metaphyseal part which is attached to the articular segment the length of this medial articular segment or metaphyseal segment if you see on the x ray this portion i am talking about if this portion of the medial metaphysis is attached to the head fragment if this length is more than 8 mm then there will be adequate perfusion to the humeral head in this case it is less than 8 mm you can see that almost 0 mm it's attached the metaphysis and the second criteria was he gave about the medial hinge displacement the medial side if you see the medial hinge is well maintained whereas in this picture you can see that the hinge has been displaced by more than 2 mm so this is the criteria if the metaphyseal extension is less than 8 mm that is the length of the calcar which is attached to the head portion and if the hinge displacement is more than 2 mm then there is more chances of more chances of ischemia to the humeral head okay so we have a one question in the chat box okay so you have a question on hertel criteria in dipsicord you can share that what was the question yes sir was it the same the predictor about the ischemia okay same so this is important the hertel hertel radiographic criteria on the basis of this you will have a prediction about the humeral head ischemia now this is important just remember that the medial side is having the blood supply you can see from the blood supply when the the medial aspect of the humerus head is having the main blood supply over here so it is important that this portion should be 
kept intact on the humeral head so that the adequate perfusion may be able to take place however this is not absolute criteria for detecting the avn if you are saying that this if these are the factors then there is a more chances of ischemia but however not all the cases will go into avn so this is all together different the future says differently not all the cases of these ischemia will relate to the avn but however on operating table if you have these features then you can predict that humeral head is ischemic on the basis of this but somehow they don't go into overall ischemia the mechanism of injury is different in the young people and the old in the young it is the two main mechanism fall on outstretched hand by the way this through the wrist through the elbow and into the shoulder joint the proximal humerus get the impact and the second is the direct fall when the patient falls from the height and directly there is a impact on the lateral aspect of the shoulder the young patient will have these two type of mechanism while injuring whereas in old patient the proximal humerus is the commonest site for the osteoporotic fracture simple fall the simple fall from the standing height fall due to slip the trivial fall the patient will have direct impact and the patient will have a fracture of the proximal humerus now we move on to the classification part the classification is based upon the four part anatomy the humerus the proximal humerus is divided into four parts a b c d this is greater tubercle lesser tubercle head portion and the shaft portion on the basis of this the classification is made and you know the name of the classification so i have a question for you again you may be having on the screen yes please attempt four part anatomy concept was originally given by you have the four options okay so we got the answers here and you can see the i am sharing the result we have got almost 80% needs and 20% they are saying codmen these two are out you know now the confusion between these two the correct answer is actually codmen so almost 80% are wrong because you were searching for the classification part and the classification was given by neil that is correct the classification of the proximal humerus well accepted is the neil classification however the original concept was given by codman the answer here is codman just remember this the codman have almost in 1935 or 1940 have given this concept of four part anatomy and he has also given a classification that is the codman classification but on the basis of that the near have devised a new classification and that's why the near was more uh, in famous sometime so that's why the near classification is famous and that's why you get confused but originally it was given by codman so let's talk about the near's classification widely accepted classification for proximal humerus and the near have divided into parts different parts of the this according to the part so what is a part according to near's a part is actually he defined when there is a fracture and the fracture the one of the fragment if it is more than 1 cm displaced and more than 45 degree angulated for example if you see in this picture there is a fracture line but there is no displacement no angulation so he called it as one part that is the single single tukrai that is the single part whereas for telling this as a two part one of the parts should be displaced or angulated so that will be the two part so just focus here just remember this this is important even when we talk about the treatment part this will be the criteria so in the two part fracture there could be fracture of the surgical neck fracture of the greater tubercle fracture of the lesser tubercle so the part should be displaced by 1 cm or and 45 degree angulation any of the above same is with the greater tubercle same is with the lesser tubercle and when we talk about the three part there will be two fracture lines and three parts will be there well separated so sn plus gt it would be the greater tuberosity plus surgical neck fracture this is the three part and lesser tubercle plus surgical neck is again a three part 
So these two varieties are the three part near structure and the four part is you all know that all the parts are widely displaced. So that is the four part. Definitely the more chances of avascular necrosis and non-union and arthritis, all sort of complications are more with four part. Whereas the least type is one part or two part, they have the least amount of complications present. Two more additions the near added is the fracture dislocation. It can be seen with any part, that is the two part, three part, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle or surgical neck. Any of the configuration may be associated with fracture dislocation and articular surface involvement. If you see from this x-ray, there is double shadow. The double shadow is actually the diagnostic of head split. So if there is a head split fracture, you can see that there are double shadow. The head is being split into the two portion. So these two categories, the fracture dislocation and articular surface are very difficult to treat and they have the maximum chance, even more than the four part of avascular necrosis. So this is all about the classification part. Now we move on to clinical presentation. You may be knowing, you are seeing the patient. There will be pain, there will be swelling, there will be chymosis, crepitus, loss of transmitted movements. They all sort of clinical presentation you can see and you will be able to diagnose that yes, something abnormal in the proximal humerus part. Now another important question regarding the clinical presentation. So what is terrible triad of shoulder? You may have a you may have heard about the terrible triad of elbow, but this is terrible triad of shoulder. So yes, please attempt. The question is visible on your screen. You may be wrong, please attempt. I know most of you may not be knowing the correct answer, but here we are to just make you aware about the important questions which are important in the MCQ wise and important concept 